This section summarizes typical satellite communications hardware. In terrestrial microwave and optical fiber systems, repeaters are generally located 25 to 50 miles apart between the transmitter and the receiver. The role of the repeater being simply to compensate for the losses incurred during transmission. A satellite link is comparable to a microwave link in many ways. The repeater in this case being located in the sky at geostationary altitude. At this altitude, the satellite receives the signals from the transmitting earth stations and repeats them in the downlink direction after amplification. The geostationary or geosynchronous orbit is located 22,300 miles above the equator. At this altitude, a satellite has an orbital velocity equal to the Earth rotational speed of one revolution per 24 hours. Thus, the satellite appears to remain stationary above the Earth. Data streams from customers' equipment are fed directly to the Earth station interface. Before the information is transmitted to the satellite, it undergoes various transformations within the baseband, IF, and RF stages of the station. The most important of these transformations include data multiplexing, voice digitization if required, data stream encoding and modulation, up conversion, and amplification. In the receive mode, the earth station performs the low noise amplification, down conversion, demodulation, decoding, and demultiplexing of the signal from the satellite. The following paragraphs shall detail the various functions of a typical earth station hardware. The multiplexer accepts digital data from a variety of information sources and combines it into a single serial data stream. Inputs to the multiplexer can be programmable controller, a large mainframe, or personal computer, or virtually any device with a standard serial interface. The multiplexer converts the information from these individual data channels into an aggregate data stream. For example, a 32 kilobits per second, or kbps, data stream could be multiplexed with two 9.6 kbps data channels to form an aggregate data stream of 56 kbps. The aggregate bit rate is simply the sum of the individual input channel bit rates plus some overhead bit rate required by the multiplexer to perform its function. The voice digitizer performs the functions of converting the analog microphone output to a digital bit stream for transmission and converting the received digital bit stream to an analog signal to drive the handset speaker. The serial bit stream from the voice digitizer ranges from 4.8 to 64 kbps depending on compression and coding techniques. The higher the transmission rate, the better the quality. The aggregate bit stream output of the multiplexer is received by the encoder portion of the modem. This device inserts bits in the appropriate places in the data stream which will give the receiving device the decoder information regarding the integrity of the transmitted data. Common schemes of encoding are 7 eighths, 3 quarters, and 1 half rate forward error correction, or FEC. Using 1 half FEC, for example, an encoding bit is inserted for every information bit. The modulator receives the signal from the encoder and modulates it onto an intermediate frequency, IF. Several digital modulation techniques exist. Frequency shift keying, FSK modulation, uses two different IF frequencies to represent a binary zero and a binary one. Phase shift keying, PSK, utilizes one IF frequency, but uses changes in phase of either zero or 180 degrees to represent a binary zero or a binary one. Quadrophase shift keying, QPSK modulation, is similar to BPSK, except that phase changes of the IF signal are either 0, plus 90, minus 90, or 180 degrees, representing 00, 01, 11, and 10 binary pairs or symbols. The up converter is simply another modulator, which receives the IF signal and modulates it onto a satellite uplink radio frequency. The HPA boosts the power level of the RF signal it receives from the up converter for transmission into space. 
Power level is primarily a function of the amount of information being sent, i.e., the bandwidth. Additional power may be added to provide a margin for uplink atmospheric attenuation. Solid state amplifiers are used for low power level applications. Higher power levels require traveling wave tube amplifiers, or TWTA. The rectangular pipe structure attached to the HPA output is the waveguide. This is a specialized type of coaxial cable used to transmit the amplified RF signal to the exit window at the focal point of the antenna. This permits the radiation to exit the antenna feed in the correct direction with minimal signal loss. The antenna feed also serves as a path for the received RF signal from the antenna to the low noise amplifier. Typically, the antenna is manufactured of RF reflecting material in the geometric form of a parabola. It focuses the reflected output of the antenna feed in the satellite direction. The same antenna serves to focus the downlink signal onto one point. The ability of the antenna to focus this energy to a precise, well-defined point depends upon the antenna size, the antenna efficiency, and the frequency of operation. The LNA amplifies the signal it receives from the waveguide while introducing a minimal noise level to the signal. Although the incoming signal has been focused by the antenna, the signal is quite weak and must be boosted in power prior to the down conversion process. The down converter essentially reverses the function performed by the up converter. The output of the down converter is fed into the demodulator section of the modem. The demodulator is tuned to one IF frequency and extracts from that IF signal the encoded digital bit stream. The demodulator must be of the same configuration as the modulator, that is, FSK, BPSK, or QPSK. The decoder removes the appropriate bits from the encoded data stream, then detects and possibly corrects errors in the transmission. The output of the decoder is a corrected serial bit stream, which must now be either demultiplexed into individual data channels or converted to analog voice. Current trends in satellite communication services are a mixed bag of challenges and promises. In the late 60s, the traditional application of early commercial communication satellites was the provision of trunking services among major international or national traffic nodes. This requirement, along with low-powered satellites, geared the use of satellite systems toward point-to-point -point communications between heavy traffic routes. This resulted in the utilization of large, expensive, and complex ground segment, such as the Intelsat Standard A stations. In those early networks, only a small number of Earth stations were involved, so that the cost trade-off of the network was driven by the space segment. In the late 70s, communication satellites were increasingly used for point-to-multipoint -point distribution services and multipoint-to-point -point concentration requirements. In such networks, tens, even hundreds of Earth stations were typically involved, hence shifting the satellite system cost trade-off toward the ground segment. Optimization of this trade-off required small, inexpensive Earth terminals at the expense of more complex and more powerful satellites. In the 80s, the size of small stations ranged from 1.2 meters to 4.5 meters, depending on applications and performance drivers. State-of-the-art VSATs are characterized by small size, low cost, high performance, and modularity. These characteristics also have a significant impact on the system installation, operation, and maintenance support. In the 90s and beyond, into the next century, residential entertainment, shopping, security, educational and business activities will be greatly enhanced by low-cost satellite services. Satellite terminals for reception only or duplex transmission could become expendable items. In other words, it will be cheaper to buy a new terminal than to get an old one repaired. For cost efficiency, improved connectivity, and interface standards, voice, data, and video services will be transmitted in a digital form.
For this reason, satellite technology is getting ready to play its full part in Integrated Services Digital Networks, or ISDN. This concludes the presentation on the introduction to satellite communication systems. Other tapes are available at Space 2000 on satellite systems planning, design, integration, technology trends, and economics. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.